What does a successful root canal and crown treatment look like? This is an x-ray that we took on a patient who complained of pain in their lower left jaw when they bit down. We can see on the x-ray that there is a failing root canal on the second premolar indicated by a dark lesion surrounding the root tip which represents a chronic dental infection. We can also see that there are dark areas surrounding the root tips of the first molar that extend from the apex of the mesial root up to the furcation of the tooth. This tooth was painful to bite test, percussion test, and pulp tested negative to EPT, so we can say with certainty that it was an necrotic tooth. We can also see that there is a deep restoration with recurrent decay that is the likely point of entry of bacteria into the pulp. A plan was made to perform crack exploration procedure and then root canal or extraction as indicated on the first molar and refer the second premolar to a specialist for an assessment to determine whether retreatment was indicated or not. Root canal therapy was carried out uneventfully. No horizontal crack lines were noted in the pulpal floor and a sealer puff was achieved on both distal and mesial roots. On six month follow up, we can see good bone healing around both root tips and up into the furcation of the tooth with the new healed bone actually appearing even more dense than the native surrounding bone. The tooth was also symptom free to bite test and percussion test, so we made the decision to restore the tooth permanently with a crown at this time. The rest of the video will detail how the tooth was restored with a full contour zirconia crown using CAD CAM techniques to scan and manufacture the crown in-house. So we're going to get going with the crown prep here. I'm going to take a KS1 burr coarse grit on a high speed and begin our occlusal reduction of the lingual surface and then the buccal surface. We're going to start off in the 9 o'clock position for the occlusal reduction. And then we'll do the lingual cusp, take that down a bit. And then we're going to move over to 11 o'clock and do our buccal cusp. This is our functional cusp reduction. So this is an important surface not to under reduce to ensure that there's adequate thickness in the crown for fracture resistance. And then we're going to do our, start with our axial reduction on the buccal surface. And obviously it wasn't necessary to extend the margin down to the gum line. So we're going to leave it a couple millimeters super gingival on the buccal surface and then we're going to do our interproximal reduction down to the gum line we're working against two gold crowns so we're probably going to scratch them here and there but we'll polish them up at the end before we scan you know our mesial interproximal reduction and then we're going to move back to nine o'clock and reduce the lingual axial surface of the tooth And then we're pretty much going to be finished our gross reduction. So we're just going to round off this little corner here and then begin retracting the gum tissue. So we're going to begin retracting the gum tissue with a size one ultra pack retraction cord. <clears throat> and I like to use a perio probe to do cord retraction because it keeps my tray set up nice and minimalistic. And of course, we only needed to retract from the mesial interproximal to the distal interproximal since the buccal surface was super gingival. So we're just going to pack the one size one cord, which is 95% of the time I'll use size one unless I'm working on lower anteriors, which is pretty rare to retract. And then we're just going to tuck in the rest of the cord. And then we're pretty much ready to scan, but we're just going to do a little bit of refinement with a fine grit Fisher burr. I follow Marcus Blatz on Instagram, and he says that there's literature. I'm going to check the buccal cusp reduction, maybe take it down a little bit more. Ensure that there's at least one millimeter everywhere on the clearance map. Marcus Blatz says that if the uh, surface of the prep is smooth you'll have a better fit of the crown without compromising retention and we're just going to smooth off the interproximal surfaces of the gold scratches happen and then we're pretty much ready to scan here we're happy with the prep happy with the retraction going to scan with our trios 4 and then this is our output we're satisfied we're going to look at the clearance map here and you'll see that there is a millimeter just a millimeter on the buckle and then good good clearance everywhere else i'm going to send that to my designer and he's going to design the stl and send it right back to me and then i'm going to plug it into my millbox software 
that uh, controls the CNC machine. I have a Roland 52D. And then we're gonna send that to the mill, press go. It's gonna do its thing. This was probably about a two or three hour job with a couple other cases for this week in A2. Dentaltown has asked me to make a uh, continuing education lecture on this topic. So we're gonna check our mill and we're happy. So I'll actually be making a lecture. Here's the green state parts. There's a macro photo, Argon ZSTML. We're gonna desprue the parts with a lab handpiece, snip it out, and then take down the sprues until we're back on the surface of the zirconia. So I'll be uh, submitting a presentation to Dentaltown in August on the topic of in-house zirconia milling, a no-nonsense guide. There's the parts in the sintering tray. We're gonna put it into the sintering oven for seven and a half hours at about 1500 C. And then we're gonna get the patient back the next week, remove the temporary crown, which had a little chip in it, remove the temporary cement, and then give the tooth a pumice. I'm a huge fan of in-house uh, zirconia milling. I've been doing it myself for about two years. Everything from single unit crowns to full mouth reconstructions, anterior aesthetic cases, all on six, Zirconia hybrid fixtures, do it all in-house, saves a lot on the lab bill and gives you a little bit more control over the process, more control over the aesthetics. Going to do a dry fit with the crown, check the contacts, check the fit, check the occlusion, and then we're going to dry off the interior surface, treat it with, I just use ethanol, then we're going to seed it down. I like uh, Panavia SA. We're going to tack cure it and then clean it up. I find Panavia SA a lot easier to clean up than 3M um, Unisem 2. So once we have cleaned up most of our cement, this is going to be a finished job. And we would typically anticipate a lifetime of service out of a root canal and a crown like this. Patient is waffling on the second premolar as to whether to get it retreated or just leave it and then have it removed at some point, but that's this one.